Good morning. My name is Tansy Spinks. My name is Kate Ryder. <laughs> um, we've only recently met, and we're very pleased to have been introduced to each other because I think, for, for me, it's been an incredibly productive experience yeah. getting to know Kate through her prepared piano, particularly, and our various shared interests in oh, many things. Many actually. things: text, art. Mm. Um, we'll be talking about that um, fairly shortly, I think. Um, but our trigger for this morning's um, performance is um, a drawing by Leonardo da Vinci from about 1519 called The Cloudburst of Material Possessions. And I, I mentioned that I was working on this with Kate and um, she really liked the idea of it, using it possibly as a sort of a, a score, but as a score that's um, a, a set of triggers really um, and a set of ideas that we might just explore for the materiality of the sound making that we'll be doing on the, the violin and the piano. And that, so the images will be coming up on the screen. They're, they're um, blind wax drawings I've been making during lockdown of this extraordinary drawing. It's only about four inches square. Um, so do look at the images of the drawings as well, and hopefully there'll be some synchronicities of, of images coming up with the sounds that you'll be hearing. Or not. Or not. And there'll <laughs> be some silences, which I, I took note from your last, your last uh, session that the silences yeah. are golden. <laughs> Thank you. Thank 
your instinct solo was fine on its own at the end. <laughs> I hope you didn't mind. It's not what we agreed. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Mm. So Great. we said um, that uh, you, you mentioned at the beginning that we only recently met, but actually mm. we've sort of known each other over the years, haven't we? You know, we've, we we've met, but we've been but passing, but in really. passing, yeah, um, always in passing, and always said, "Oh, we must, we must do, we must something. do something." Um, yeah, and, right. <laughs> and I think we first met at, um, at the <coughs> Cornelius Cardio event. That's right. Uh, a few years back at Morley College, That's right. called the Engine Room, which was a really excellent yeah. event. Um, I curated the um, I curated the uh, South Bank event for that mm. Mm. with uh, improvising painter Mark Rowan Hull, oh, right. uh, dancer Susanna Reckia, and uh, Roger Reckett on uh, uh, Steinberger violin. And, okay. well, I think yeah. we've, we've both found that Cardi is an important sort of influence on, on what we do. Very much so. Dem yeah. Democratic music yeah. making means his scratch orchestra, of course, is the famous. Ensemble that has well, of course, and treatise. I think it was probably a, a springboard for many um, <coughs> Indeed, of yeah. these. Um, I mean, I was very struck yesterday to uh, uh, to hear Charlotte speaking about her Sonny Cons mm. because it mm. resonated a great deal with with um, the images that that uh, you have here and that, that we have that were drawn out of the Da Vinci. Um, although we didn't use ours as a, a score as such, mm. but um, I was really moved by. Um, what what I saw yesterday and um, got me to thinking a lot more about uh, how how we were working like this. I, I guess uh, I, I just want to say that um, we started working by me going to your wonderful little studio in Brixton. Yes. <laughs> we're both South <laughs> Londoners, and uh, uh, walking to this lovely. I mean, it's a, a rather sort of austere kind of looking office block, isn't it? Yeah, it's an old and department it, it, that's store. That's right, right, old yeah. department store. Yeah, yeah. In Brixton, on, on the main road. But um, you go through, and a lot of it's very windowless. You, you sort of don't know where you're going. You're going up several floors, and it looks quite sinister. And then suddenly, at the end of the corridor, was your room full of light, just white, and all these um, images everywhere. <laughs> and uh, in a way, I, I realized for you it was, had been a complete outpouring. This, you said, was your space. Uh, especially during lockdown. This is how you remain sane <laughs> <laughs> when you got off Zoom. Um, and you showed me, actually, this, first of all, this picture, this, this image of the, the uh, Da Vinci cloudburst. Mm. And it was such a striking image. This image, uh, that was happy. happy Coincidence, conference. yes, yeah. this is, this um, is the image. This itself. is the image. <coughs> the original the, drawing, in, which is uh, in Windsor Castle. It's yes, it's part of the Royal Peter Collection, collection. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was uh, using black uh, chalk and uh, ink, I ink think, on and chalk on paper. Yeah, uh, yeah. And my versions are done with bl blind, what I call blind wax drawing, which is yeah. using a candle. To I was do going the to say that, that, that this ink. had been an inspiration for you, but I just wanted to say how tiny this is. Mm. Mm. It's a tiny it's little drawing. This is actually size, yes. postcard size yeah, that yeah. Leonardo did, and it's yeah. actually very tiny. Yeah. Um, but you then went on to show me all these um, developments that you'd. Uh, not exactly homages, but you know, reactions that you'd had. They are homages, actually, to Leonardo okay. and his extraordinary mind. And uh, the fact he drew this this torrent, this deluge of possessions falling from the sky, you know, seen as a sort of um, uh, allegory, really, uh, against human vanity, that we shouldn't have too many possessions. And yeah. I you know, it's never anti material. Been, absolutely. Anti -material. It's never been more prescient than it is now. In That's fact. right. Um, something that I really loved about your um, waxings. Uh, was, you know, I think I described it um, as, um, you know, uh, invisible ink. Mm, mm. You know, sort of yeah. uh, like a, as a, a child, we, we did, we sort of wrote secret messages in invisible ink and it was, you yeah, know. Absolutely, and, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe it, it'd be interesting for you to just discuss the process of those drawings because that they were just so important to how we began to develop this. And, and this is still an ongoing project, of course, um, well now, right at the beginning. I suppose for me and for us generally, the idea of chance is a very important aspect of what we do, mm. allowing a serendipity to, to come into our sort of creative processes. And for me, at drawing blind, so I'm using a white wax, just a candle on white and huge white sheets of paper, and the, the, the um, image only becomes revealed afterwards when you, well, you, when the you wash, wash yeah. the yeah. ink, yeah. the ink across it. So um, the images are things like piles of plates, rakes. There are some musical instruments falling bag from the sky. That we, are think? we think is a bag we pipe. think is a bag so pipe. No it might have been a water sack. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, the sort of pince nez, you know, there's mm. this little pair of glasses, which is a very humble and sort of moving mm. uh, image to see because mm. it's, you know, something we would use now. Yeah. I've got one on my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, the colours were determined simply by how many colours I had to use up in the studio. I was also using up old, old materials from the 1970s and 80s. So that was part of my lockdown project to myself. So the whole thing came under a sort of conceptual so banner of... Friendly. Uh, well, yes, that well too. Well done. Um, I don't know, and they're huge, they're huge drawings. I saw a few of them, I huge, unfurled a few of them. Complete contrast to yeah. the Leonardo, this, this yeah, tiny yeah. little... So it became this sort of outpouring, very, busy gest very gestural, yeah. very, very yeah. busy sort of experience. And I've videoed a few of them, of them being revealed, as it were, with the blind wax and the ink. Um, but it's been really great to use it as a device, just to bounce off, really, in, in terms of some of the subjects. Yes, rather that we're than actually reading it, which we had mm. decided, we, we had thought that we might use yeah. it. We in, couldn't in this actually way. see. Uh, we're, we're, looking, literally. we're looking this way because it's over there on a screen. But, but it wasn't even so, even had that not been us, no. even had that not been the, the mm. idea. Mm. Uh, e even had we had the availability of something to watch, I think we had decided that we would keep that as a score in here. Mm. Mm. Um, and this idea of, of um, not to be too literal about... But, but the idea the of things pour, mm. uh, uh, falling mm. was, was, was very a important very to us. So yeah. hence the sort of glissandy mm. downwards mm. as motifs that we That's keep right. returning to. And the plinkiness of the raindrops of the deluge, the impending deluge. It's very biblical, of course. But it, um, something that also struck me was, um, I don't know how many people know this, but Leonardo wrote um, several diaries, mm. uh, several journals, mm which have been publi published um, into, I think, three volumes, yes, three no, very large no volumes, books, which I think yeah. are available in the V&A, mm, for anybody yeah. who's interested. But um, what I hadn't known, and this really fascinated me uh, as a musician, is the, that he, he wrote them in code in, in the sense that he wrote them backwards. So yeah. his handwriting is mirror image. So yeah. all the yeah. journals... Back are in, are back inside the front, out and back to inside front. out and back to front. <laughs> and in, obviously, old Italian, so yeah. you do have to be fairly dedicated. And a lot of them have been analysed, but many still are yet to be. Yes. So there's a sort of fascination about that. that Historically, they don't know why. still mind, to be mined. Yeah, yeah. They think that it might have been code, or they think that uh, maybe he was simply left-handed and that it had been very easy for him to do this. Yeah, maybe it's a, a, a uh, practical yeah. reason of not wanting to get the ink yeah. in, in yeah. a way when you're drawing, yeah. when you're writing from left to right. But these hidden meanings are just so interesting. Mm. And mm. Uh, I suppose for me also, it informed the gestures of what I was doing. Right. I was trying to write uh, oh, something backwards on yeah. the instrument. Mm. Um, mm. But I suppose that was about it, um, as literal as it, it, it might have gotten for me. I, I'm not quite sure how many percussive sounds there were today because I was just in the moment with you mm. but um, previously when we've worked um, this idea of the beginning of, a, of something unsettling yes. something something knocking against something something just vibrating something ominous you know that something is going to come yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's what we it could be ominous on, or it could it, it might or actually brooding. not be it, it <laughs> might be you know because a, a storm is can be mm. cleansing as well True. So um, I don't think it is in Leonardo's drawing. I think it's really quite sort of... Well, you that, know. that's your interpretation. Well, yes, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the greatest respect. The big it, clouds. It's how we respond to over, it. Over, yeah. Overshadowing yeah. us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How are we doing for time? Are we all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're okay, yeah. yeah. Um, is, there, is there anything that you'd like to ask, ask. Ben? Because in a way, we now know each other so well <laughs> that we're just <laughs> we going to have a chat. So... Um, I wondered if there were any questions from the floor or... Actually, could I just do a bit of a shameless plug? Would you mind? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, because we were talking about materiality generally, weren't we? <laughs> and, 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 you know, the basis for this yeah. session was very much thinking about materiality. And I have just... We've just produced a book with the music department, so it's a really nice collaboration with Fine Art and the music department. The Sa Sound Art and Music, Philosophy, Composition and Performance, which is in the library. And a couple of those chapters by other people, not, not by me, are about materiality, playing, and, um, ha and how um, musicians can think very differently about the sounds of their instruments. And there was an example from Ben. Mm. <laughs> um, well, that's a worthwhile plug, I would and say. And I just want to say it also has... The cover is, by, uh, is my homage to Max Neuhaus, who's, I think, one of the most important sound artists, under, underrated, who worked with Cage originally. He was mm. a percussionist, wasn't yes. he? Mm -hmm. um, who, you know, we don't, it's not so known about now, and... Um, yeah, he, he, he was the first person to take people on sound walks and stamp listen on the back of their hand to 
to take his audience who he thought they were coming to a concert around Brooklyn. That's actually quite listen. interesting, isn't it? Because you do um, very urban sound walks mm. uh, in Brixton. Yes. And I think you told me you limited, uh, there can't be a more urban scape <laughs> than Brixton. <laughs> than Brixton, <laughs> as we both know. Mm. Um, uh, you know, multiplicity of, of cultures and, and people and noise. And, um, and so uh, I think you said you limit it to about 12 people. Mm and then come back to your studio yes, where people yeah. write in their own words about their experience. But it's all done in silence, which is a very, has, is, is something that has come up a lot today when we've been talking about performance. The walk is done in silence. No one's allowed to take a picture, record, talk. No one's allowed to talk for an hour, which I think gives a lot of people good licenses to you know, have their thoughts to themselves. A and lot of people aren't used to doing that. No. <laughs> And it's when I get back to the studio, I just record the conversation yeah. and I transcribe it, and then I use that as a basis for mm. other artworks. And, um, yeah, it's an exciting way of working, actually, and it's great collaborating with other people. Um, I also I've done sound walks around the environment here as well, actually, in Hendon, with art students and theatre students, mm. so it's yet to do it with music students, perhaps I'll arrange that. Yes, it's something that. that we should arrange. Um, uh, nevertheless, it's that urban scape of Brixton that, that really fascinates me, mm. and, and mm. because there's so many sounds, how do you, you know, what you, how do you, you really have to listen very closely. We always think it's when we're listening in, in silence, to the distant, mm. you know, jet engine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But actually, in, in Brixton, you have to pick out all these sounds. You know, sirens. Yeah. There are uh, layers. Screams. Layers of, you have to think <laughs> in layers of sound and how how yeah. much you filter yeah. out and how much you take in. It's interesting you say mm. that because an artist that is really very important to me um, is Gerhard Richter, mm. and um, you know, he's really fundamental. I mean, his uh, works I sometimes use as scores. And oh, I didn't um, know that. You haven't shared that. No, with me. I haven't. <laughs> well, what I should have. Different? That's another yeah. conversation. We're, here, we're having it now. I'm sharing it now. And um, actually, there is um, this is another plug, but not for me. Th this is uh, for Gerhard Richter. There are all his drawings on at uh, the Haywood Gallery at the moment. It's a free exhibition. And for anyone who's imp interested in um, uh, son icons and um, uh, in, in improvising in general and, and using. Uh, an artwork as a score, um, it, it's definitely worth uh, looking at, at this. Great and going and visiting. Is a great yeah, new, yeah. Another homage, yeah. possibly. So. Yeah, another homage. Thank you, Kate. I think we've